Hey guys, um, last video here, I'm um, leading up to Anthony Clarica's talk. Um, for those who have missed it, Anthony's the author of The Performance Mindset. Uh, he's worked for 30 years with elite athletes and AFL clubs and V8 supercar drivers, winners at Bathurst and um, ATP tour tennis players and Olympians and Socceroos. And he's also worked in corporate and educational areas. And Anthony, um, today's tip is on healthy eating. How can the elite athlete performance mindset help with the everyday person in healthy eating or trying to you know eat more healthily which can be a challenge for a lot of us myself included first of all thanks Cameron for inviting me uh, to do this brief presentation and for inviting me into recharge and um, when people come along and register for the presentation they do get a you get a copy of the book uh, as part of attending the night so looking forward to meeting people there and Healthy eating is it's actually part of the job of an athlete. So they're very fortunate. They receive a lot of education, support. Often their meals are provided for them. Within, our, within people's general lives, we don't get that level of support. And of course, you don't need a particular physique in order to do your job necessarily. But healthy nutrition, and we've mentioned um, exercise already in this series, really does help your well-being and helps you function effectively uh, as well as maintaining health for longevity and offsetting illness. Um, if you don't make time for your wellness, you'll be forced to make time for your illness is a quote that I sometimes use, Cameron, and nice. people need to be conscious of that. With regards to healthy eating, let's break it into two areas, Cameron. Let's first of all consider the environment because I think people put too much pressure on themselves and just build personal skills for healthy eating. But if we think about managing the environment, you can consider what you put in your shopping trolley, what's in your house, where do you keep it in your house? Great little study that even where you put chocolate in your cupboard on a very high shelf or right at your eyeballs influences how much you'll eat. And that's why supermarkets use those tricks. They actually put things that are easy to buy and they know people are attracted to right at your eye level so that you'll purchase it. We can use that marketing strategy with ourselves at home. When you eat is important. Is it really late at night? Is it, is it as soon as you get home and then you're gonna be hungry late at night, you'll be forced to snack. Managing your environment of when you eat can be a really important thing. And do you eat with others? Because if you eat with others and there's a generally healthy meal, it's a lot easier rather than you're, you're um, eating on your own and it could be at any time. And then it's likely to become a bit more random and less organized, Cameron. And if we take time to prepare a meal at a certain time, and it is with others, the likelihood of it being more healthy increases significantly. And then finally, just with managing all the environment factors that help us to eat well, um, the time that you give to eat. We live such busy lifestyles, we rush. It's a quick lunch, it's a quick breakfast. We put our food down real quickly. There's a concept I often talk about called mindful eating, Cameron, where we just slow down, taste the sensation of food, appreciate the food, consider it as fuel and nourishment rather than something that we just have to be quick with uh, to meet our emotional needs. If we allow time in our evenings to prepare, to appreciate and to enjoy our meals, it's likely that it'll be healthier. That's the environment side of things. If we think of personal skills to help our eating, what are your goals? Do you actually have goals? And I don't think there's anything wrong with having healthy eating goals. That's a little bit different than having a weight goal, which can be quite pressure, pressurized or a body image goal, which I like to steer people away from as a general rule. Um, healthy eating, what are your healthy eating goals? Would you like to eat more strawberries and fruit or more vegetables or um, less carbs or portion sizes? Just think about your eating as a general rule rather than thinking about body image and weight, which can be a big distraction. That helps us to avoid dieting as well, Cameron. And great research shows that 95% of diets fail because they don't create enough of a lifestyle change. So what I'm talking about with goals is think about your lifestyle. And then for yourself, create a general guide that you work towards. Strict rules are very difficult to sustain in our lifestyles, which are often quite busy, whether you've got children, work, sport, commitments, after hours, other things happening, 
uh, it's quite difficult to have rules. I like to create general guidelines and get people to think about guidelines. Uh, I'd like to eat more, more yogurt. Great for gut bacteria. Have more yogurt. I'd like to eat a bit more yogurt. I'd like to reduce my alcohol consum consumption and I'd like to have this and then have those guidelines link in to feed your behaviours or let's say fuel your behaviours uh, if we don't mind the pun. But some guidelines from a personal perspective that you're working towards. So manage the environment and create some personal strategies to help you. Look Man, forward to talking about a bit more on the night, Cameron. Fantastic. And I think we'd have you back for about 10 talks based on all the info we've got coming out of these things. So um, oh, it's all to, enjoyable. Yeah, look forward to seeing everyone on Wednesday the 19th um, for the talk.